hello, hello, everyone, and how is everyone doing today? My name is Sharice Johnson Moore, and I am the owner of Sharice Johnson Moore LLC, where I help entrepreneurs gain exposure through advertising, broadcasting, uh, publishing, and marketing. And I want to welcome everyone into today's broadcast of a special guest. It is, uh, her name is Miss Janice Kenyatta. And she is a fearless educator, trailblazer, and an author. And I wanted to, and she's here to speak about her latest, 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 latest book, her latest book. Um, and I wanted to have her come and speak with us about her author journey. All right. Hello, Miss. Hello, Miss Janice. How are you doing today? Hello. How are you doing? Hello, Miss Sharice. I'm doing fine. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You are so welcome. Miss Janice Kenyatta is a fearless trailblazer in education. Brings 40 years of experience as a retired educator and school administrator. As the first African American and the first woman to serve as supervisor of career and technical education at Essex County Vocational and Technical Schools, she shattered barriers by managing a team of 70 teachers across 31 diverse programs with a master's degree in business education and postgraduate su supervisory certification in career and technical education in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Ms. Janice exemplifies lifelong learning, co-author of Black Folks Have Revisited, Secrets, Shame, and Liberation, she recently published the captivating children's book, Just As It Is. She's also created the beloved Abina doll, inspired by her book's main character. Beyond her accomplishment, Miss Janice is an empowering mentor who captivates audiences with her speeches and workshops. She uses her ability to challenge perspectives and ignite passion. Reading is re residing in Sonic Wind Gap, Pennsylvania. Miss Janice cherishes her roles as a mother of two daughters and grandmother of identical twin granddaughters. Her life's motto, the more we learn, the less we feel, uh, encapsulates her unwavering belief in the transformative power of knowledge. Let's all welcome Miss Janice Kenyatta. Hello, Miss Janice. How are you doing today? Hello. Thank you so much for that introduction. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome so much. You're welcome so, so very much. Thank you for coming and sharing with us today uh, your, 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 your new creation, uh, the Abina doll and the uh, book entitled, 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 Just As It Is. So how does it feel to be an author, dear? <laughs> it feels wonderful. Um, as I have a background in education, and uh, as you read in my introduction, I wasn't been in education for 40 years before I retired. So I have a passion for learning and for teaching. So being an author puts me in in both those categories. So it's it's a good feeling. Amen, amen, amen. I know it is very important for us to you know you know, get an education and keep doing what we're doing. And it is very important for us to keep that in mind, you know, keep keep that in mind for us to do. 
Um, so, Miss Janice, um, what got what what got you started in education? Well, you know, as a child, I remember loving to read. I was always a reader. My sister and brother used to be outside playing and I would always be in the house. I remember, and I've, I've been told this as well, but I remember being five, six and seven where they would be playing and I would be reading almost to a point where it was a little weird, but <laughs> I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I remember um, at some point, um, I think I probably had children. I was playing the teacher, and I think kids have a tendency to do this when they're younger. Mm -hmm. I, when we played school, I was always the teacher because I just like imparting and just giving knowledge and information to other people. So that started as a child. And, um, and another small quirk of mine is that I wanted to be an actress when I was very young as well. Mm -hmm. So that didn't materialize. And once I went to college, then I realized, well, teaching is almost close. <laughs> Yes, okay, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I uh, I totally totally understand that. So, as a, a you know, what inspired you to start writing? Going, <clears throat> excuse me, going back to my childhood when I was a, a reader. Um, I remember around fourteen or fifteen years of age, thinking to myself, I just love reading novels at that point, and mm -hmm. I was saying to myself. I'm going to write a novel. I think I was 14 or 15. I'm going to write a novel. Mm -hmm. I wrote one paragraph and then I got stuck. I guess I had writer's block. But I think I got, in retrospect, when I think about uh, back to that time period now, mm -hmm. I think that I was too young. My brain hadn't fully developed and mm -hmm. I didn't have enough life experiences to be passionate about what to write about. Okay. So I didn't know what to write about. So I, I, I stopped. I put it up. And then years later, which we'll get into, I'm sure, as we as the interview progresses, years later, mm -hmm. I got the, um, or I always like writing in general, even as a teacher and writing reports for teachers and that kind of stuff, quotes for students. Mm -hmm. But years later, in terms of writing a book and becoming an author, that would materialize in my um, probably late, late 30s at that point, um, or early 40s where I co-wrote the first book with my husband entitled Black Folks Hair, the one you mentioned in the uh, in my intro. And that's where the interest really spiked because that was where um, I felt that this is a time um, to educate. My writing is always about educating people. Mm -hmm. And I saw that as an opportunity. So that's kind of how I got involved in, in becoming an author is to impart positive information to other people. I know that's right. I know that's right. Because mm -hmm. if it weren't for teachers, you know, uh, my granddaddy used to tell me all the time, says the one thing can't nobody take away from you is the education. Yes. You got to get all of it that you can while you can, you know. Absolutely. Because, and we see that in today's society that they are trying to find ways to go back to the old ways of keeping us from learning how to read, write, arithmetic, that, you know, they, they trying to find all these, put all these clauses and laws and stuff, and you can't go to school for your hair, got braids, and I'm sitting there like, yes, I'm sitting there like, wait a minute, what does a braids got to do with the person's brain? Absolutely. What does their looks have to do with them getting an the education? It has no, I could, you know, um, I could get in this topic all day long, but I'm not. <laughs> um, and, um, and and that's the thing that I, I I used to practice as a kid when I was growing up. I used to practice as a kid. I had a classroom because my grandma had a chalkboard mm -hmm. and I put my dolls up and 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 uh teach, you know, they my students, you know, we talk to them like teach, you know, and put them up, you know. I used to play school when I was growing up. And now it's like now I want to really fulfill that role in the capacity. Uh, that I'm in, you know, mm -hmm. and it is very important, you know, where, you know, that we don't stifle our children when you see them being creative. Absolutely. You no, know, you don't stifle them, um, you know, uh, and, and and we don't stifle their learning, their learning creativity, their minds, you know, because uh, as Martin Luther King, you know, as they say, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, 
So I want to ask you about what themes or messages do you explore in your book? Can you explain uh, your your book and and give us some some uh, you know some some themes or messages behind that? Sure, sure. So the book, just as it is, believe it or not, I wrote that book twenty five plus years ago. Oh, okay. that's the backstory. And people look at me and they go, wow. <laughs> and it's still, the subject is still timely in mm -hmm. 2024 and it will always be timely. Mm -hmm. But I wrote this book in response to the Black Folks Hair book that I wrote, co-wrote with my ex-husband, where mm -hmm. in that book, and I, I have to give this backstory in order to bring you up to why this book, I started writing this book or why I wrote this book. Um, Black Folks Hair was a psychological, sociological, historical work on why Black women straighten their hair. And that book, my husband, ex-husband and I wrote in 1996. Okay. And that topic, again, is a timely, was a timely topic then, and it's still a timely topic. Even though we've gotten a lot better in terms of the love of mm -hmm. our hair, mm -hmm. our curly hair. Mm -hmm. And we don't want it always straight all the time. And that's a whole other volatile issue I'm not going to get into. <laughs> that's another show. However, mm -hmm. however, that the book did very well and it reached a, a large audience, a, a world a worldwide. Mm -hmm. And so um, at some point I was in high school, in my high school class, and I heard a young lady say, this was after we wrote that book. Mm -hmm. I heard a, a young lady say, I hate my hair. It is such a curse. Why is black people's hair a curse? Mm -hmm. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what she said. I was mortified. Having already written a book mm -hmm. on loving ourselves and where that all came from, where we stopped loving ourselves. Yes. Now we have this young lady in my class saying she hated her hair. But that mm -hmm. set me off because then I started thinking, you know, the love, the self-love journey does not start when, and, and this was high school, by the way, I taught high school. So she mm -hmm. was about 16, 17. Okay. The self-love journey does not, it cannot start at, well, it can, but it's very difficult to start at 16, 17, 18, and 19. It yes. has to start from childhood, from a baby. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. that concept of self-love and loving your hair, your facial, your facial features, your complexion, everything mm -hmm. about yourself, your complete self comes yes. from the home environment. Yes, ma'am. And it starts when you are a baby in the cradle. And mm -hmm. so um, when I heard this young lady say that, I said, I said, went home and I said to my family, I'm going to write a children's book. This was 25 plus years ago. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to write a children's book that addresses the issue of self-love at an early age. Because mm -hmm. parents are our, our children's first teachers. It has to come from the parents. Yes. I went through it myself with my two daughters. Mm -hmm. I started wearing my hair natural because I wanted them to wear their hair natural. And I wanted them to love their hair and their features. And mm -hmm. they, they still do to this day. They're in their 30s. Yes. And they still wear their hair natural, like I do. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and I'm not, and I'm not, don't want to sound preachy, but I'm just giving you how, you know, trying to lay out how this all started out with the whole, whole love of yourself. And yes. for this, this uh, children's book that I wrote. So in any event, um, I wrote the book. But I didn't realize I wrote the whole manuscript during that time. During that time, life got in the way. I did write something. I remember saying, I'm going to call this book just as it is, because mm -hmm. I want people to be proud of just as it is, just as they are. I wrote it, put it away. We built a house in the Poconos. We moved. I commuted 175 miles a day to my job. Life was, whoa, it just exploded. I mm -hmm. forgot that I wrote the book. Oh. Put okay. it in the, I must have put it in the attic. Long story short, fast forward 30 something years. Well, well I shouldn't say 30, 25 years later. Mm -hmm. My husband and I, unfortunately, we separated and we got a divorce and we sold our house. Mm -hmm. And he found the manuscript in the attic. Oh. And he said, do you know that you finished this book? I said, no, I didn't finish it. I started. Mm -hmm. He said, no, you finished the whole book and it's wonderful. You need to publish it. Mm -hmm. And this was back in 21. Mm -hmm. When I was told it's 2021 mm -hmm. and I got them, he gave me the manuscript and I tweaked it. I brought it up to the 21st century mm -hmm. and then he helped me to publish it, self-publish it because we self-published uh, the other book and he, he self-published many books of his own. So, um, so I was just so ecstatic to get this message out. I said, I got to get this out because the way that young lady felt 
back then, which was in the in the 1990s, early mm -hmm. 2000s, we mm -hmm. still have many children that feel that way about themselves. Yes, ma'am. So, got the book out, and here I am today. Amen. Well, as they say, we ain't on our time. We on God's time. Absolutely. <laughs> and God knew when this book needed to be published. Uh, you know, and so um, you know, how do how you know uh uh you know what other so how do you overcome your writer's block? How did you did you have writer's block and how did you overcome it? Um I, for the most part, um when when I'm real passionate about something, I can write for days. Oh, but yeah. I'm human. So there are times when you do come across, um, you know, a, 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 I guess I call it a brain fart. <laughs> you just, the, the information is just not coming. It's just not forthcoming. And so I find that um, sometimes I, I have to step away. I have to put it away, put it down uh, one or two days, maybe even a week. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm working on my time. I'm not working on anyone else's time because I'm not working for a publisher. So it's not like I have to get it out. Right. I have a time frame. I have my own timeline. Yes. But um, so I, I just, you know, put it on the side. I have find, found also that it helps me sometimes to do a little research. They say in some cases, the Internet is your best friend. Anything you want to look for, you can find. So mm -hmm. I'll stop sometimes if I get to a situation where I don't know how I want this to develop or what direction I want it to go. Into. I'll mm -hmm. do some research. Yes, I'll research the topic. I have done that. Mm -hmm. And it puts sort of puts things more in more perspective for me in terms of the direction that I want to go. Mm -hmm. And um, and the other thing, the last thing that I, I would do is anything, any creative idea that comes into my head related to what I'm writing about, I'm mm -hmm. going to write it down right away mm -hmm. because I'm a busy person. If I don't write it down, it's gone. Right. <laughs> Be like, out of my head. Yeah, like, wait a minute. I know I thought about, because I've had that happen to me as well, where if I have something come in my head and if I, like, I don't write it down or record it on my phone or my voice, the voice memo, I forget. And then sometimes I could sit at the computer and it come right back to me. Yes. Oh, yeah, what about that? Yeah, okay. All right. You know, um, sometimes I have one of those moments. Yes. So I completely, totally understand that, that, that concept of mm -hmm. You got so many things in your head and you be like, you can't, you know, you can't remember them all. Absolutely. So, you uh, and I always tell authors, look, take a notebook with you. Take a writing pad, use the mm -hmm. voice memo on your phone, you know, so you write these things down. And then you go through them on a day you're sitting down and you're not doing anything. No distractions and go through a review of your phone on the voice message. Then you be like, oh, yeah, that's right. I did think about that. You know, that's right. So, yeah. Very important. Uh, Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, so what other forms of art, music, or experiences inspire your creativity? Um, I I would say uh my re uh write my reading when I read certain information. I do a lot, still do a lot of reading, but not so much books as much as much as just articles and on mm -hmm. different and on different things or events happening in the world. But uh, I would say reading sparks my creativity or inspires it. Music, and I like all genres of music. I don't care if it sounds good to me, I like it. Okay. You know how some people say, well, I only like r and I only like jazz. Mm -hmm. That's not me. Yeah. I have a very eclectic taste for music. I like all kinds. So that has a tendency to inspire me. I think also um, talking to my grandchildren, they're nine and they'll be 10 in a couple of weeks, but talking to them, just hearing their thoughts and, and the questions that they ask me, that's very inspiring to me. And just talking to people in general mm -hmm. inspires my creativity. Researching again, I do, I like, I like to research everything. I don't care what it is. I just mm -hmm. want to interject when I, just to show you the connection to the way I am now. When I was a child, I used, we had, I'm dating myself, but remember the World Book Encyclopedias? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Britannica Encyclopedias? Mm -hmm. Well, I used, I we had a had them in my room on a bookcase, and it's it's interesting they had them in my room because mm -hmm. I was a reader. And every day or every other day, I would take out one of the alphabets and just go through it inside. Now, who does that at seven, eight, nine years old? But that's what I I would read the encyclopedia, 
from yeah. start to finish to see what everything began with an A when I had the A's. What begins with the B? What's happening in the B world? Mm -hmm. in the C world? And that's what I did. Yeah. So researching is another inspiration. And I think for me, um, life in general is an inspiration. Life to me is an art form. Yes, ma'am. So I see that as a, as one of my biggest, you know, inspirations mm -hmm. to be creative. Oh, all right, all right, all right. I know that's right because sometimes I can sit here and um I'll be working on something, and uh I'll be playing my I like meditation music. Yes. And meditation music keeps my mind soothed, calm, uh you know, and it it helps me. It really helps me think in yes. the moment. And um, I don't rush through my work. Um, I, you know, I'm an avid researcher myself. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm always trying to find ways to do this, that, and the third. So, yes. and, uh, and it's very important that when you sit down to get into your work, that you have a calm environment, a mm -hmm. calm, relaxing environment. So, and, you know, that, that's, that's, that's how... That's how the juices get flowing. That's how the, the magic works. When the pen hit the paper or you type it, you know, your keys hit, your fingers hit keyboard, you know. That's right. And, uh, you know, so what would you tell an aspiring author? Aspiring author? Um, I would tell an aspiring author to network. Network, network, network. Don't isolate yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a tendency sometimes we, you know, creatives sometimes have a tendency to be in the bubble mm -hmm. and we're in our own little world. And mm -hmm. but you have to get out of that bubble and you need to get out in the world and you need to um, network with as many people as possible um, who are in the area that you're interested in writing about or maybe outside the area because they can add another, a different perspective as well. So mm -hmm. I would clearly say, um, don't isolate, um, network. If you um, embark upon, upon something and it didn't quite go right, you learn something from that. Mm -hmm. Move on, take what it is that you learn and try a mm -hmm. different approach. Don't, because you didn't, that didn't work out the way you wanted it to, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever it is, just mm -hmm. go ahead and then do it a different way. Mm -hmm. Because if nothing ventured in my world, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Amen. And, and, and I always have a saying, um, every time you, you, um, you know, you learn something or you think you fail at something, you gain something. Amen. And so, you know, networking is key, researching, um, getting out, getting out into the world and just exploring, researching again, just mm -hmm. all the things that's going to help, you know, help you reach your end goal. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So can you read us an excerpt from your book? Sure. Yep. Here's the book, just as it is. And um, okay, I'm going to find. Okay. This is a short, one of many inspirational from the book, inspirational um, passage from the book. As a new baby, Abena had a head full of hair that was smooth and straight. Zara and Ajamu, her parents, knew that Abina's hair texture could change as she grew older. They knew that when many African-American children grow older, their hair changes into a beautiful and unique texture that can be styled in different ways. Mm -hmm. Zara and Ajamu promised each other that they would raise little Abina to love and admire her features, mm -hmm. like her mouth, nose, skin, co skin color, and her eyes, including her hair. And one, one more passage to, along with that. They would teach Abina that people all over the world are different shapes, sizes, and colors with different features and hair textures. And then I have on that page, a picture of children from all over the world mm -hmm. and how they look different, but they are fine just as they are, just mm -hmm. as it is. They're still beautiful. Oh, okay, okay. Um, you wanna uh you want to discuss a Bino doll? 
that goes along with your book? Yes, I um, Abina is, a, is six years old in the book. She's going to be seven, mm -hmm. and um, and there's a picture of her in the book with this hairstyle as well. And if, if you saw this in person, this it simulates, <clears throat> it, um, simulates uh, natural hair. Mm -hmm. So Abina is, if you can see. She's a, a plush 14 inch um, doll. Mm -hmm. It's a cut, cut and sew doll, which in my translation, she has no bones because <laughs> she's nice, soft, and cuddly. Okay. <laughs> so I see it as a lovable companion to any little girl who gets the, um, you know, who buy, who, whose parents get the book for her. And it's mm -hmm. a companion. It's just a nice combination. The, my illustrator did a wonderful job with the color, with the uh, uh, pictures. And yes. then I just thought having them side by side would be just such a nice compliment to the book. Um, you know, yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So where can someone purchase the book and the doll? Well, if you go to my website, www.janiskenyatta.com, you can actually purchase the book. If you just want the book, you can get the book through um, Amazon and there's a link there. If mm -hmm. you just want the doll, there's a link there to just get the doll. Mm -hmm. If you want the book and the doll together as a gift set, now I've al already uploaded Etsy.com. So you can go to Etsy.com and order mm -hmm. that book and that doll together. There's also a phone number if you want to talk to me and you want um, an autographed copy in particular where, where you just got the book. No, I, I won't say that because you can order the book through Etsy.com and get an autograph copy from me. But okay. um, if there's any special order that you might want, there's a number there that a person can call me if they want, let's say $5. Mm. Okay, they will call me and say anything more than $2. You can call me from uh, that number. So everything they need to know. I also do author's readings <clears throat> and that kind of um, that kind of thing. So my number is also on there. If anyone wants to have me in for any author's readings, to um, young children. I love that. I love reading this book, this story to young children and see the light in their eye. I can actually see the light bulb go off, off go on in their eyes when I when they get the crux of what the story is about in the book. Okay. Okay. All right. So I want to ask you these last couple of questions. What goals do you have for your writing career in the coming years? Well, I would, I'm getting so much, such, such a good response with uh, Abina that I, I think I want to continue with an Abina series. Mm -hmm. And so as we speak, I am writing a, a second book mm -hmm. on, um, well, I don't want to give out what it is right now, but I, <laughs> I am yeah, writing, you want on the way. yes, I am writing a second book, mm -hmm. um, that, um, I think also will, 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 and I, can I, can I just say one thing about this book? Just mm -hmm. as it is. Even though I talk about, I have the doll Abina, um, and I talk about uh, the, she's the main character. This book is not just for girls, <laughs> and it's not just for black girls. I just I, that's a very important piece that I want to make while I'm on this podcast is that the book is for um, all children. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter who they are, and it has a, 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 a overarching. It has two messages that I wanted to make clear. One is to love yourself, no matter who you are. Amen. Amen. Take that self-love journey, self-esteem, and for parents to teach that to their children. And the other one is to accept and appreciate the mm -hmm. differences in other people, because that's where a lot of our polarization and our issues lie, is people think that, you know, because their hair is this or their face is this, that they're better. They have superiority over the people. No, that's mm -hmm. not that's not true. We're all great and unique in who we are. And that's what, just as it is, emphasizes. So mm -hmm. it's self-love and it's acceptance and appreciation of other people from different cultures and ethnic backgrounds. So, and the other piece to that is that the Abina doll has been getting a lot of um, uh, nice, uh, what should I say, um, reviews. And mm -hmm. so I want to kind of extend that to um, boys too. So that I'm working on something like that too. So I, I got a couple of things I'm working on in the future, but I'm definitely working on a second book for that, that, um, talks about Abina and her life. All right. All right. So what is your favorite book or author? I don't have a favorite book or author. I have read so much. I'm the way, the, the way I, um, um, 
you know, listen to music is the same way I read books. I have a very eclectic taste for different types. I like all kinds of stories, whether they're novels, fiction, nonfiction. Um, I read, when I was a young kid, I remember reading a lot of um, uh, James Baldwin and, you know, just anything, anything I can get my hands on that was of interest to me. So I don't have a specific author, like I don't have specific music. If, mm. I, if I like your book, I like your book. I don't care who you are. If it's mm. a good story for me, it's a good story. Okay. Favorite um uh, uh favorite snack while writing. Potato chips and ginger ale. Okay. <laughs> Potato um, chips are my comfort food. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So uh we want to thank Miss Miss Janice for coming today on Authors Extra Sunday podcast. And we want to say we want to let let everyone know that. Uh, Miss Janice can be found on Facebook. Her link is in the uh, uh, link is uh, in the screen on the screen on the ticker table on the screen. It is uh, facebook.com backslash Janice Kenyatta. And then we have uh, so you can find her on Instagram as well at Janice Kenyatta. And you can find her also on TikTok as Kenny8530. Okay. So we want to say thank you. Uh, is there anything you would like to uh, say before we go, Miss Janice? Um, I think as as long as I, I guess I just I, first of all I want to thank you for so much for having giving me a platform to discuss um, what this book is about. But um, you know I just would encourage if it's not my book to encourage parents, all parents, to please teach your children self love from the beginning. Um, it's a journey, so it has to start somewhere. Let it start as a child and let them grow, um, you know, into an, a, a confident um, adult that appreciates themselves and loves themselves. But at the same time, they appreciate and they accept other people. To me, that's so important in life. Um, if more people did that, I think this would be a better world, more peaceful world. Amen. 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 I want to say thank you, Miss Janice, for coming. And we're going to call it a wrap for today. And I want you all to go to Miss Janice's website to purchase the Abina doll and the book entitled Just As It Is with Abina being the main character. So I want to thank you so much, Miss Janice. And when you write the next book, okay, you know where to find me, right? I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> I sure do. Amen. Amen. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. I'll be right back, okay? I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone, everyone, everyone. That is our author for today, Miss Janice Kenyatta. And I want to thank her so much for coming in and being a guest on the show. And I want her to come back now. Yeah, we're gonna we gonna bring her back when she get her next book. So uh because that is what we do here on Authors Extra Sunday. We support other authors and we support their their positivity, their mission, their 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 networking, the things that all the authors do. So until our next time on this planet, until next next week. I uh, want to say thank you, everyone, for coming to view and coming to enjoy the program of Authors Excerpt Sunday. And come back now, you hear, and let's tell the world about your book. <laughs>